everybody, welcome back to Bentley House. Today I am back working in the Beetlejuice dollhouse. I couldn't really think of anything holiday related to kind of wrap in with the Beetlejuice theme, but if you were looking for a holiday video, wait till the end of this one, and I have an old video that I'm going to leave a link for you in the description. But back to this video, it's going to be a little bit of a shorter one, and that's because I have a life-size project happening in the background, and it's taking up quite a bit of my time. But I still wanted to make sure to be getting out a video to you as much as I can, even though this month they might be a little bit shorter. I'm really excited to hopefully share this project with you at the beginning of the new year. But back to what I'm doing today, I'm going to be working on the chairs that go in the dining room. This is part of the scene with the shrimp hands, which I made in the previous Beetlejuice video. I need to create seven of these because there were seven dinner guests at the table that evening. There's really only space for six chairs at the table, so I'm going to be making one extra that can kind of be pulled to the side. Because these chairs are so geometric and I have to make so many of them, this is going to be a technology heavy video. I always try to balance this out on my channel, a little bit of making things all by hand and a little bit of using technology to cut or print items. So if you're one of those who don't really care for the technology videos, you may want to skip this one and head to the next video, which I do plan to do a lot more handmade. I could just envision the hand pain from cutting them all out. However, I do have to do a bit by hand to finish the chairs and make them look like they need to look, so I hope you'll still enjoy it. All right, so let's make the chairs. You may recognize this chair from my abandoned attic room, so what I did was I took the same basic structure and I evened out all of the fancy bits and made it a little bit more geometric and then of course made the back taller and more rectangular. So I'm going to be putting it together in a very similar fashion. Pretty much the pieces are going to just be glued to make double thicknesses and then there's little holes that I laser cut into the legs and those are going to hold toothpick pieces later on to make sure that the chair is structurally sound. I do realize that mine are just a little bit different from being movie accurate. Mine have a slope towards the top and that's going to help them just to have a little bit more strength. This mat board that I cut them out of gets a little bit thin and that makes it a little bit more prone to breaking or bending and I felt like the A shape would give it a little bit more strength. I also added that bar in the middle to give it more strength as well. Even though my first chair was taller than my original cat ear chair design, it wasn't still tall enough. So I grabbed Beetlejuice just to make sure, and it does need to be more shoulder height. So my second design, which had a taller back, ended up being more appropriate for the look I was going for. And of course, before moving forward, I had to check it with my table that I made in a previous video as well. If it didn't work with the table, I had to make some adjustments. Thankfully it did, and I made sure that I could get two chairs on each side. Now it was time to cut enough for six more chairs and to put them together. Once they were done, I ended up with seven chairs in total, six which will fit around the table and one that will go off to the side. All that was left to do at this point was to add the toothpick supports. These are pretty important just to make sure that these mat board legs don't end up folding in on each other. I do think it would have been more design appropriate to have square toothpicks. I didn't happen to have any, but I think they would have gone with the more geometric look or the more uh, right angle look of the chair if I had had square toothpicks. To help the painting of all seven chairs go a little bit more quickly, I decided to use this Lazy Susan that I had previously ruined with a horrible resin pour. <laughs> and I am going to use this so that I can easily move the chairs around while I'm painting with the airbrush. Before I can do that, I'm going to stick everything down with some painter's tape so that it doesn't go anywhere with the force of the air. The Lazy Susan made this process so much easier and it will definitely be staying with my airbrush supplies. 
I was able to just work on each chair and slowly spin the pieces and then I could work on the backs again spinning so that I could get to each one. This way I didn't have to touch any of the wet chairs and move them out of the way so I could put in a new chair. I don't currently have any metallic paints that I feel comfortable running through my airbrush because I just haven't researched it and I don't have any that are specific for that. So I knew I was going to have to do the metallic look myself. The chairs in the movie look like they are made from some kind of brushed metal, so I wanted to try and get that as best as I could. This is just some silver paint that I picked up from Target because I was in a rush and I had to get groceries as well. And so far, I've really liked the results I've gotten with it. The reason I did a base coat of gray first is because oftentimes metallic paints are a little bit see-through. As I'm putting down the silver, I'm making sure that my brush strokes all go in the direction I want them to for that brushed metal look. Here are all seven chairs painted, and at this point I do start to see that I missed a few spots. It's a little difficult when you're working with different lighting to see what's shining and what's not, but I figured it out. Now this chair was sent to me by Stephanie. She sent me a whole set, but unfortunately the scale did not work for my project. But I really loved how she did the back of the chair, and I wanted to try and recreate that. In the movie, it looks like there are gray, maybe rabbit pelts on the back of the chairs. But I really liked how the black and white cow looking material looked, uh, especially because Delia's napkins are black and white and I just thought that would look really cool. So I'm changing it up just a little bit, but I do think Delia would still like the effect that I'm getting, hopefully. To create the chair backs, I'm going to do kind of a paper mache. First, I'm creating a mixture of water and glue where it's still mostly liquidy, but it does have the glue in it so that I can start laying down some paper towel on top of some wax paper. I sketched out the inside shape of the chairs so I knew how large to make these, although in hindsight, after I had created everything, I do wish I had made them just a little bit smaller. I think they do end up a little large. What I'm doing is hand tearing some paper towel and layering it on top of each other until I have about four or five layers of paper towel. I don't want it to be too thick. I decided to grab some India ink to see if I could pre-stain these so that once they're dry, I didn't have to paint them. So I, that worked pretty well and I kind of like the effect for later when I make the cow look but this is going to be the back of the pelt or the back of the chair material, and it needs to be completely black. So I am going to be taking some of that ink. I took it out of the bottle so I didn't have to stick my gluey paintbrush into my India ink. And then I just painted it on top while it was still wet so the ink completely soaked into all the paper towel. Once this back piece was dry, I could go ahead and pull it off of the wax paper. This is the side you are going to see when you're looking at the back of the chair. I'm going to be using this creepy cloth. This is the material that you can get at the dollar store during Halloween time and during some other times as well. I'm using this as my string to attach to the chair, but of course you could always just use regular string and just, you know, just layer them on top of each other. But I figured this would be a quick way to get a lot of strings coming out of this piece. I'm going to be gluing them so that there's several spaces in between because I do want strings sticking out so that I have enough to attach it to the chair back. I'm just gluing these down on top of wax paper so I don't get glue all over my work surface, but once I have them all in place, I can go ahead and peel it off and then lay it somewhere upside down so the glue can dry. Now I'm doing the same process I did previously where I'm using some glue and water and paper towel and I'm building that up four or five layers thick to create another piece and I'm doing seven of these again so that I have enough for each chair back. While these pieces are still wet, I'm going to do the same process with the India ink, except I'm not going to completely cover each piece. I want it to have that cow look. This ended up working incredibly well because the ink spreading through the wet pieces gave it these little spidery ends, which really ended up looking like fur. 
I do want to note that I should have left a little bit more white space in the center because as these dried the ink continued to spread and I ended up with a few that didn't have as much white space as I wanted. While the cowl pieces were drying, I decided to go ahead and cut apart the creepy cloth that I had glued everything to earlier. These are the black pieces that are going to be on the back of the chair. They're supposed to look a little bit leathery. So to create this, I decided to paint each one with Mod Podge. They were looking a little bit like old chewing gum that I had just pulled up off of the sidewalk, and I felt like the Mod Podge would give it just a little bit of shine. This is matte Mod Podge, which is not supposed to shine, but it does have a little shine, and I think it's perfect for leather. Once the black and white pieces were dry, I could peel those off just like I did before. And I did notice it was pretty easy to peel off any extras. So if I felt like a part of it just needed to be a little bit smaller, it was easy to just tear off a bit. Now I'm going to be matching the black back piece with a similarly sized and shape piece for the front. And this is going to create a sandwich where the creepy cloth is going to be sandwiched in between. So I have a cow patterned front and a completely black back with the strings coming out of all the sides. Once it's dry, I did put a 123 block on it to make sure it dried as flat as possible. Once it was dry, I cut it out so that it did have shorter strings around the edges and started to see what it would look like on the chair. Before even trying to mess with the strings, I decided to glue the main piece on first. So that's going to be the uh, paper towel piece that I previously created. Anywhere I know it's going to touch the chair, I added some glue, and I'm going to glue that to the chair frame. As you can see, I was pulling the strings out so that there were no strings that got caught in between that piece and the chair frame. I'm also pulling the strings out to the side because those are the ones I'm going to be attaching. I added some glue to the side of the frames and then I started pressing the strings into the glue so that they were sticking straight back. Once those were all going the direction that I liked, I could use some trimmers to trim up the edges and also remove any extra strings from the top and the bottom because those I was not going to attach to the frame. Then I added more glue to the back of the chair frame and wrapped the strings around the back and pushed them down into the glue. This one chair, this first chair that I did, I realized I made the strings a little bit too short. I wanted to give the illusion that the strings wrapped all the way around the frame, but um, this time I just did it a little bit too short. So I made sure to make them longer the next time around. But I do feel like I achieved the look I was going for, which is a piece of fur or leather attached to the back of a very modern metal chair. I did this for all seven, and you can see that one where I did start to lose a lot of the white. I wish I had a little bit more of that left, but that's something to keep in mind for next time. For the most part, I'm very happy with how the chairs turned out. Let me know in the comments if you think I should have stuck with the original gray or if you're liking the black and white as much as I am. Making all seven chairs, even though I used the laser cutter, ended up taking me a while to finish them the way I wanted to. However, I still had time to add one more detail. I really thought it would be fun to try and just wrap up the dining room because I don't want to be like bouncing all over the house, kind of like I did with the Adams Family. If I can finish up one area, that might be kind of a cool way to go about doing the house. I don't know, I'm just kind of experimenting as I go along. Since I already had the laser cutter running, I figured I'd go ahead and make the utensils that I needed to put on the placemats. I'm going to be leaving the SVG pattern for the utensils in the description box below. It's below the title. If you just open it up, you will be able to click and download the SVG. This will help you use it on a Cricut cutting machine or on a laser cutter, anything that will cut through cardstock. Yeah, cardstock is what you want to use. So let's make some utensils. 
Even though I only had place for six place settings at my table, I went ahead and laser cut out eight settings just in case I mess these up. These pieces are so, so tiny. I'm using a bit of glue to dab some glue onto the handle of the spoon, and then I am going to be cutting out the spoon handle shape and gluing that on top. These pieces just give the utensils a little bit more dimension. It's not a ton of dimension. As I said, these pieces are really, really small, but your eye does pick up on these little tiny details. And if it was just a very flat piece of paper, um, for some reason you can pick that up really well. And so I just tried to add a tiny bit of detail. For the spoon, I didn't want it to be just completely flat, so I'm adding a little dent into some foam board, and then I'm going to add my spoon on top of the foam board and gently press into it with a ball stylus. I'm not holding onto the handle while I do this because I'm pretty sure it would rip the handle off, but it does make the spoon into a nice rounded shape. I'm using that same metallic paint I used on the chairs and I'm going over the pieces. When I'm painting something this small, I like to paint on top of my hand only when using acrylic paint, but I find this is a much easier way to make sure that I don't lose any of my pieces and my hand is washable and non-stick, so <laughs> that makes it a little bit easier. I only painted one side because I will be gluing these down, but I like how they came out. I figure Delia would be one that would know the proper place setting methods, so I had to look up where the utensils go for a proper place setting. That's just not information that stays in my head. I also wanted to bring out these polymer clay napkins that were created by Andrea. Thank you so much for sending them to me. I'm so excited to use them on the table and I wanted to make sure I had it. I don't think I'm going to put the fork on top of the napkin. I think I'm just going to set it to the side because in the movie they do pick it up and use it. So I think they'd probably just fold it when they sat back down. I'm carefully adding glue to the back of each utensil and using a pair of tweezers to make sure they are in the right spot. They are so small, I feel like if I breathe, they would disappear. I also have these two regular shrimp bowls that didn't have the hands coming out, and so I didn't glue them down to a placemat, but I did want a placemat for them, so I glued the utensils down to the placemat and left the bowls unglued in case I wanted to set them by themselves in the kitchen. I did this for all six settings. Remember the seventh chair will be off to the side so it doesn't need a place setting. Now I can put everything in place. I am so happy with how these turned out. I think the chairs work really well in the space. Obviously the space is so small the chairs can't go fully back, but that's one of those things that happens when you try to translate a soundstage into a dollhouse. I still have a few more things that I need to create for the dining room. I need to make, I think there's an ice bucket with some wine or champagne on the table. I need to create Delia's sculptures that are going to go in that back area. I've had several people reach out and offer to make them for me, which I really appreciate. However, I kind of caused a problem in the fact that I made the sculpture area so small, so I feel like I'm going to have to make those myself to make sure they fit in the space. I'm not even sure I can get all of the sculptures in there because of the space problem, so I'm going to make one that's kind of walking around the house. I'm hoping this will be my next video, which will be more handmade items because I'm going to have to sculpt all these sculptures. And then of course I have the floor. I totally missed my, my hand there. 
And then of course I have the floor and the ceiling that I will have to complete with some kind of lighting fixture in there, but I don't even have a ceiling to work on yet. And the floor I wanna wait to do until I have the entire first floor completed. So that's all I have for you today. As I said, if you're looking for a video with some more Christmassy vibes, be sure to check out the unlisted video that I have linked in the description box below. It's a really fun project I did a while ago. I privated the video around the time that I was getting nervous about COPPA laws. <laughs> Because it is with my daughter, we made a gingerbread dollhouse. So it is a bit more of a play item versus a art item like I typically create. But it's a cute video. It was also during my phase of where all the music in my videos was incredibly too loud. So sorry about that. <laughs> I've learned since then how to control my volume, hopefully. It's a learning process. YouTube is just a constant learning process. Next week is going to be a live stream video and then the week after that I hope to have that sculpture video ready for you and then that will be my last video for the month. I'm going to be taking the Christmas time off to spend with my family and hopefully complete that real life project I mentioned so that I can share it with you. I'm super excited. I hope you all have an amazing week and I will see you in the next one. Bye! Hi everybody! Welcome to... What am I trying to say? What is this? I don't know. A rainbow! <laughs> did my chair squeak through this whole thing? I don't think it did. Did I fix the squeak? Magic squeak chair fix. Okay, time to turn the camera on. The button, there it is.